Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty a True Nerd, and welcome to the Many a True Nerd 6th Anniversary Special. Oh yes, six years, six years we've been doing this. That is a very, very long time indeed. And as some of you will be aware, on the anniversary, I have a very special tradition indeed, which is uh, I get in the kitchen and make something spectacular for all of you. But there is also a secondary tradition, a... um. A less good tradition in some ways, which is I have an unfortunate habit of breaking something that belongs to Claire that she owns in the kitchen. Like, say, um, there was her whisk and her frying pan and probably some other stuff I'm forgetting too. So, basically, what I've decided to do this year is I'm going to make it up to Claire a little bit by making her favourite dessert in the world, and also hopefully, like, you know, not breaking anything while I'm doing it, which is the macaron, and... Hang on, macaron, macaron, macaron... Is a macaron and a macaroon the same thing? No, no, I was right first time. A macaroon's like a little coconut thing or something. It's macarons I want, the little kind of pastry sandwich things. So Claire really loves those and that's good because that's what I've got a recipe for. And this shouldn't be too difficult really. It's just a nice simple recipe. All I need to do is follow 17 easy steps. This is not going to go well by the way. So just in case you're unfamiliar with a macaron, basically what it is is it's like a meringue biscuit with a filling and it's got three components to it. It's got a pat, a ganache and a meringue. Now, I know what a meringue is, I don't know what the other two are, so I'm like a third of the way there, but fortunately, as I say, I've got a recipe, and the first two steps are actually pretty easy. Step one is just turn on an oven. So, I can do that, that's absolutely fine. Step two is I need to melt myself some chocolate. And you can't just like stick it in a microwave, you've got to do it all fancy like. So I'm going to do the thing where I boil some water, then we're going to put a bowl on top of the water, then I'm just going to put the chocolate in there and we're going to make it melt that way. It seems ludicrously elaborate to me, but it's what the recipe says, so it's what I'm going to do. Except for one small slight complication. The recipe told me to buy two types of chocolate, one that was just like a bit dark, and one that was like really, really, really dark. So it doesn't actually say, hang on, I need to go and check the recipe because I need to figure this out before I start melting stuff. Okay, it's this one. Right now I'm making the pat a macaron. So I need 100% cocoa. And oh, the water's also like boiling and stuff. So that means we're pretty much there. Hang on, turn, turn that down, turn that down a little bit. Don't go nuts here. Let's not go too mad. Okay, so simmering water. Put bowl right there. Next up, chocolate. That's 100 grams of chocolate, but it comes in like five pieces. So logically, three pieces is about 60 grams. So I'm just gonna break that up into like little bits and we're gonna dump that there and that's gonna melt in like a nice sensible chef fashion. I mean, I'll give them, that is melting. It would have melted in the microwave too, but it is melting. So, while that's happening, we can move on to step three, which involves the icing sugar and the ground almonds. So I need 185 grams of almonds. This is 200 grams, so therefore, in chef speak, what I need is most of them. Yeah, what I should be left with is about 10% of the almonds, which I think that's probably about 10% left over. So I'll just stick that over there, that's good enough. Icing sugar's a bit more complicated. That's like 500 grams in there, so I need like... Need about a third. Hang on, if it if it's up to it's up to about here right now. So if it goes down to about like here, then that's that's enough. Right, next up, two medium free range egg whites. So we'll just crack that and then don't let the goat get in as best we can. Alright, there we go, there we go, there we go. Yolk goes over here, yolk goes over here, more white goes over there. There we go. That's, that's pretty much most of the white. That'll, that'll probably, that's good enough. Yolk goes over here now, good. All right, second one, that's pretty good as well. So that is, yeah, that's nothing but yolk in gel. That just goes over here in that bowl with the other, out. that just goes over there with like the other, the other stuff. That just, that just stays over there now. We don't need that anymore. Got the whites, good. Next up, don't forget to wash your hands. And now we just mix this together to form some form of paste. 
So I'm kind of hoping that these eggs were big enough. Because if they weren't big enough, then I might not have enough liquid. Or if I just put in too much icing sugar. But this looks sort of like a paste to me. So this is fine. I mean, I'm not 100% convinced I'd use the word paste here. Kind of like... Some form of slurry, maybe slop. Slop would be a good word for this. This doesn't feel quite liquid enough for paste, but it's what I've got, so it's what we're going with. Now, while that was happening, the chocolate finished melting. As you can see, it has melted. So now, we just add a little bit of this into here, mix it all up, add a bit more diddly diddly dee. Because this recipe is specifically for chocolate macaroons, because Claire really likes chocolate too. So these are not just kind of basic plain macaroons, which are just kind of like sweet and almondy. I'm adding a load of chocolate in as well to improve them. And the rest of it in too. This is really, really dark bitter chocolate, by the way. This is like 100% cocoa. But Claire really, really likes like super dark bitter chocolate. So hopefully this will be to her liking. So that there is the pat and macaron. Component one completed, or rather completed for now, ready to be added into like something else later. I don't know, I think we mix it with meringue or something. So now we just have to put that on one side and move on to component two. All right, I've prepared myself another couple of egg whites here because now we're into phase two of the macaron, the meringue. Now the recipe says I need to add one drop of lemon juice into the egg whites over here but it's also very very specific because there's actually a warning in the recipe it says add one drop of lemon do not add more you will ruin everything so i'm quite frankly nervous about this because i don't know if i'm accidentally going to put like too much in or something so like there's a little bit at the top there see i need one drop i need literally one drop one one drop but not more come on that's that's oh oh okay i'm getting no oh, okay that's that's a drop. Hopefully that wasn't an excessively large drop. Otherwise, I've just ruined everything. So, that's, that's meringue mix right there. And the thing is, this is where things get fun and interesting and sexy. Because this here is the K-Mix, the massive super awesome food mixer that we get to use to make meringue. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to use this without an adult present. But Claire did decide to go outside while I was doing this. So really, this is her fault. Except for one small problem. She's removed the actual blade, the spinny bit that actually mixes the meringue and I don't know where it is. Right, clever Claire, bloody clever. Okay, while I'm waiting for Claire to come home, I'm just going to skip step five or six, whatever that was, and move on to six or seven, whatever came after it. And that is a first for me. I need to, like, melt or cook or boil or something, some sugar. Anyway, I need to make sugar, which in its natural form is, like, you know, a solid, and I need to make it a liquid instead. So this is 500 grams of sugar, I need 185, so I need, like, again, like, maybe, like, a, a third down to, like, about here-ish. That should be fine. If I just get that much in the pan... That should be, that should be, oh, I squeezed, I squeezed it a bit, a little bit more than that, a bit more than that. That's, ish, hang on, that's, that's, that's about right. That's about the right amount of sugar. And into that, I need to add in three tablespoons of water. And I've literally got a tablespoon measure. Hang on, zoom in on that, zoom, zoom, there we go. A tablespoon measure, so I know how much a tablespoon's supposed to be. Because apparently I can't be trusted with a normal spoon. Still, this is rather useful, isn't it? So according to the recipe, what I need to do now is cook this with a high heat so it like melts or like melts more. Because yeah, now basically I've just got some slightly soggy sugar. Until it reaches the soft ball stage, which I've looked up. That is apparently precisely 117 degrees C or 242 degrees Fahrenheit. If you prefer using a system of temperature measurement that makes no sense whatsoever. And I was just going to eyeball this, but before I began, Claire warned me, actually, melting sugar is kind of dangerous and goes horribly wrong and you can burn yourself terribly. So I decided to go and get myself an actual little thermometer thing here, so I can measure how hot the sugar is, so I can actually, you know, get it right. Because I would actually like the thing I'm making for Claire to be, you know, nice. 
Right, that's now ready to go, but that needs to be ready to pour into the meringue, so I've got to start the meringue going. So, now, I'm going to go eat something made by somebody else, which will therefore be tastier, until Claire gets back, so she can show me where she's hidden the thing that makes the K-Mix go mix. Okay, two quick changes. I've decided to bin the old sugar and get some new sugar in a new pan. Because the pan I had before was so big that the thermometer had no realistic chance of actually, you know, like, getting to the bottom of the pan or being inside the sugar. So, I needed a smaller pan so the sugar's, like, deeper. So, that's fine now. This smaller pan will work much better. Change number two. I found where Claire keeps the things. So, actually, we can start mixing after all. Spot on. So, get the egg whites and the tiny, tiny, hopefully not too much amount of lemon. And we just pop that into here at this point. So that all goes into there. Lovely. In you all go. Hopefully I have enough, like, you know, the drop of lemon in there. Otherwise that's going to be a problem. And now we just turn this on to a medium speed. So we're just gonna... Oh yeah, this is the thing. This is the thing right here. And that's not medium. That's low. That's like as low as it goes. So we're gonna start just moving that up in the world. Oh yeah, this this thing's a sexy, sexy beast. Right here. So we're gonna get there into... Oh, that's... Is that medium? That's... Hang on, where's that? Oh, that's not even close to medium. That's like still way over not on medium. I'm seeing where medium is. Medium is... Oh, that's... That's the stuff. Hang on, where's... Where's Max? No, where, oh, no, 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 sorry. That was... Max is like not as far around as I thought. Right, this is medium. This is medium about here. So that's that's going to be a thing that we just do while I'm doing the sugar situation. So a couple of things are going to be happening at once for a minute. So now we start cooking the sugar under an extremely high heat. And the important thing is we watch that little red thing because that needs to get up to 117 Celsius or 142 Fahrenheit, which is, no, those are at the same place because they're the same temperature. So basically, we're just going to fry the hell out of this here sugar in order to get it to turn into, I don't know, liquid sugar, I'm supposing. And this thermometer means I'm going to get the temperature just right. And I need to be really, really careful. Because apparently, like, this is quite dangerous. And if you splash this on yourself, it's not a good time. So, we need to just be ready to kill the power, or gas, I suppose, the moment that hits 117 degrees C. I have no idea how long this is supposed to take, by the way. So, I don't know if this is, like, you know, weirdly too little or weirdly too much, but... We do have the thermometer right in there. I purchased this thermometer specially. So we just need to get it to, yes, yeah, softball. Which means if you take this at 117 degrees C and put it into cold water, it forms into a soft ball. So, you know, due credit to the guy who named that. That makes sense. Story checks out. Now, the problem is this thermometer is not the most precise thing in the world, so I can't be 100% sure where, like, 117 is. All I know is it's like, okay, the bit in the middle between 100 and 150 is going to be 125, so broadly, like, the tick before that, hang on, there's five ticks, so that's five ago, so that's 120. Right, okay, so just before, like, the tick before the tick in the middle. That's, that's how we're calculating this. I borrowed Claire's camera, by the way, which is why we can do the drama zoom onto the actual thermometer. Pretty good, eh? Okay, we're coming up on the tick that's the final tick I want to actually go past here. So as soon as we're halfway up to the next tick, we kill the power, and that's it. I've got myself liquid sugar or something. Okay, I made that 115. So as soon as it gets to the middle, up to the next part, that's where we want to be. So yeah, about like halfway to the next. That should be a hundred. Oh, it's supposed to be 117. Yes, I just double checked. It's definitely supposed to be 117. I should have double checked that before. Right, that's good enough. I'm going to kill the power. Yep, kill the gas right there. That is about 117. That's fine. Over here, meanwhile, sexy stuff has been happening to the eggs. The eggs are now most definitely nice and fluffy. So we now lower this to its lowest temperature. No, not temperature, it's, it's spinning. Motion, whatever that is. So that's now going very slowly. And now we have to put the sugar syrup 
into the thing. And the recipe does specifically say, take extreme care because this bit's actually dangerous. So at this point, I'm going to say, don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Leave this to the professionals, or if professionals aren't available, me. Okay, so this is going in right now, and I'm keeping this nice and far away from my hands. Because apparently this will burn the hell out of you if it goes wrong. So we're just going to put all of that in there on the lowest speed setting, okay? In goes the sugar. Right, the technical name for that was apparently sugar syrup. I just actually looked that up. So, what we've got to do now is, for like two to three minutes, whack this up to absolute maximum. And hang on, we're going to get a bit of steam off this, because, yeah, this is actually quite warm on account of the, you know, sugar. So we're going to whack this up to max and give that a bit of a pounding. Oh, that's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. So, two to three minutes of this. And there we go. Right, it's awesome, but it's very noisy. We're just gonna, we're just gonna let that go quiet for a minute. There we go, beautiful. So that is Italian meringue mix. And now it's time to bring back a friend from earlier. Right, everyone remember the Pats de Macaron from earlier? Right, that's that over there. Over here, meanwhile, yeah, we got the Italian meringue. Now this needs to be added into this. And it needs to be added in until the ribbon stage. Which, as I understand it, means what I need to do is continually add in the meringue until a spoonful of the combined mixture sits like a ribbon on top of itself, if encouraged to do so. No less and no more. So, I've no idea what that really looks like. We'll figure it out as we go. Also, I'm mildly concerned that there are chunks of what looks distinctly like, yeah, just like... I don't know, boiled fried sugar in the bottom of the meringue. Which makes me think possibly, yeah, we may have just um, slightly overdone the sugar. Possibly the temperature of the pan itself pushed it beyond soft ball into hard ball. Which may possibly be bad, I'm not sure. Right, I've just looked up a video of ribboning online and... Uh... I'm gonna be honest, like, the thing that they were demonstrating, it looked a lot like, you know, paler and more liquid than this. This seems a lot more just, like, sludge. So, something may have gone wrong here. Okay, I've mixed in all the meringue, and I don't want to mix in any more, because if I do, there's just a very real chance that, um, yeah, we'll overmix it. So, if I just kind of do that... In a way, that looks a bit like a ribbon. Like, it's vaguely it's vaguely holding its shape along the surface. Like, kind of a ribbon. I'm going to say that's good enough, because even if it's not, it's what we've got. So it's what we have to work with. Anyway, now it's time to pipe all of this. So to pipe this, I need to actually yeah, create like a bit at the end. The recipe says something like a third of an inch or eight millimetres. So that's... That's probably about eight millimeters or a third of an inch. There we go. So now, now I've got myself piping. It just occurred to me, I should have probably put this into the bag before cutting the hole at the bottom, but we are where we are. Okay, we just put the sludge into the bag. No, I've, I've no idea how this is supposed to be done, but we'll just... We're just shoveling it in, and it's it's sort of working. Okay, that's it's probably enough-ish. I mean, maybe we'll probably make less macarons than I was originally hoping to make because I'm struggling to get it into the into the bag. But we are going to have some. In many ways, I blame the recipe for this because the recipe provided no guidance whatsoever on how to get said mixture into said bag. So, do you remember how we turned the oven on right at the beginning? That was like step one. Hopefully I remembered to mention that. I'm pretty sure I did. So, the reason we did that is, this whole time, there's been a baking tray in the oven getting nice and toasty. Because what I'm supposed to do now is get some, like, greaseproof paper. Here it is. I knew I had some. Right, so we've got ourselves greaseproof paper, which claims, according to the box, it's going to make baking easy. So this greaseproof paper is made of lies. So I'm now just going to put some greaseproof paper right here. 
and I'm gonna pipe my disgusting, broken, doesn't work mess onto it. Then I'm gonna get out the hot tray, slap down the grease proof paper on top of it, and that's going to start pre cooking the macarons. And that's good because that's going to give them their distinctive colorette according to the recipe. Now, I didn't know they had distinctive colorettes, but apparently they do. So that's what we're going to do. Also, I need to just very quickly double check the recipe here. They need to be three centimeters in diameter, two centimeters apart. So... They're going to be fairly close together, gotcha. This thing, by the way, is now absolutely disgusting to touch. But here we go. So, three, three cent... <laughs> this is not the consistency it's supposed to be. Okay, we're just going to three... Okay, so more. Like, uh, there we go, bit of that, bit of that. So we're, gonna, we're just going to have some of this and... What, what, why is it coming out of the... Okay, it's coming, it's coming out of the other end. It's coming out of the other end, which it's not supposed to do. It's supposed to... It's supposed to come out of the... Why is it... Okay, hang on. I need... I need to... Oh, bloody hell. I need to... Ow! Okay, I just need to... I'm gonna cut a new, better thing. I don't know what went wrong with this one, but something went wrong with this. And now there's... There we go. Right. So that's that's probably now too big, but maybe maybe it's fine. That's... There we go. Now it's coming out of the that side. I'm just... I think there's a tab further up in it somewhere. This is... This is disgusting. This is disgusting right here. But there we go. This is... This is how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to, like, pipette things. It's, it's, is pipette the right word? No, that's a thing in chemistry. You're supposed to, like... It's, it's like a flourish or a florette or... Okay, it's, 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 yeah, it's just, it's just coming out of the back again. It's just coming out of the back. It needs, it needs to not, okay, I'll, I'll mop this up once I've done. This is the point where it really starts to go wrong, I think. We were supposed to have enough mixture for 30. What we've actually got is, that's, uh, 18. But each of these is only a half. So actually, that's, that's actually just... Yeah, that's nine. It's gonna have to do. You know, this year I was really genuinely thinking, after the tabby cake last year, I'll just follow the recipe and I'll make something nice. But no, I think we might actually be looking at something even worse than the tabby cake. And that's quite frankly impressive. Okay, so we've got ourselves a big ass baking tray right here. I've got the biggest baking tray ready. And then we got this. It looks like they're... Broadly the right similar-ish size. Maybe not quite, but like it's it's pretty close. So what I've got to do now is I've got to get the greaseproof paper over onto this tray. And I'm not sure it's gonna fit, but it might come sort of close. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tear like a bit off the edge now to make it fit better. Okay, we've got to do the transfer here carefully. Alright, it's gotta be very careful. So we don't lose the macarons, because we don't we don't have much of it left. So we've just got to very carefully get that in position here. Okay, so prepare, 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 and drop. I am going to be abundantly honest here. I am not seeing a distinctive colorette. Don't know what a distinctive colorette looks like, but the recipe specifically says distinctive colorette, implying that, you know, I'd recognize it on site. Right, well, screw it. It's too late for second thoughts now. I'm just going to bung these in the oven for eight minutes and we're going to see what happens as a result. Okay, so, it's not great, but it's not as bad as I feared it might be. Now, some of them have admittedly sort of burst. Not quite sure what actually happened there, but some of them have burst, yes. And others have sort of grown together into single macaron or double macaron sing you know what i mean they're kind of they're, they're fused now they're just fused together but the overall texture looks broadly what i would expect a macaron to look like i think not that i've really eaten many of these in my life i'm mainly making these because claire likes them but i think that's roughly what they're supposed to look like anyway at this point what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to leave them until they're cool before we make the ganache, whatever that is precisely, and then create, like, the sandwich cookie thing that is a macaron. 
So, time has passed, things have cooled, not all of them look terrible. One died, by the way, one just kind of disintegrated when I was trying to take it off the paper. This one, though, this one looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this one. That looks like roughly what I think a macaron ought to look like. So, at the bare minimum, this one, paired with maybe like this over here, I might actually have one good macaron in here. At least one. Right, final stage now. We just need to make the ganache. And apparently I could have made this at any point. In fact, it probably would have been better if I'd made it before. But screw it, I didn't. So we're just going to have to work with it. Now, ganache is basically just a fancy word for, you know, filling. It's just the cake filling of mini biscuit cakes. Because this is needlessly poncy. And basically all you need to do is take some double cream. This is like whipping cream, but in Britain, because we don't have whipping cream. It's just double cream, apparently. So what we need to do is just make this hot using fire. Now, this bit's so easy, even I can't ruin it. I just need to make this hot until such time as it boils. Okay, some mild complexity, though. There are some bubbles around the outside, but not, like, in the middle. So is that... Is that boiling yet? I don't know if that's technically boiling yet. I'm going to wait for like at least one bubble that's like in the middle before I declare that boiling. You know what that'll do? That's plenty. Right, so kill that. Take it straight off the heat now. Oh, blimey. Sorry, I made it sizzle. Okay, now into that hot cream, we just put like a ton of chocolate. And now we just whisk that in using a plastic whisk, which I can't possibly break. So, hot cream, chocolate. Alright, this can't go wrong. This is basically just delicious already. And this, this is what ganache is. That bloody fancy name, just for this. It's just some chocolate melted in some hot cream, for goodness sake. Now, officially, the next step is I'm supposed to take that ganache and put it into a piping bag. To which I respond, no, I refuse. Because ultimately, we're just supposed to get one teaspoon onto each of these ganache biscuits. No, not ganache. Ganache is the thing. These are the, the pats, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, if you want me to get a spoonful on, I've got a spoon right here. Though admittedly, first, I've got a bit of a puzzle to solve, which is I've got to match these together into pairs in a way that they'll actually form biscuits. So, for example... This one probably wants to be friends with that one. Like, they're roughly the same shape-ish. Okay, I've paired them off, and I've also just remembered I made enough ganache for 30 macarons. And at this point, I'm down to about six. So, we're gonna have some spare ganache. Alright, last little bit of spooning here. Everything's good. So, that's a bunch of ganache. And now, basically, they just need to be... Hang on, I'm going to check the recipe here. Do I just they basically just squeeze them back together? Yeah, top with another macaron to create a sandwich. So, this has now created a sandwich. And that is now a macaron. So, all I need to do now is just basically pop those on here. And broadly, we've got what we need. Seven, in the end, as it turns out. Just seven. So... We're, um, we're lacking a little bit there. We are, yeah, about a quarter, slightly under a quarter, in fact, of what the recipe said I was going to be able to make. But I have made some, okay? Now I just need to let them cool for a bit. In fact, officially, the recipe says put them in an airtight container in the fridge. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, so, we've got ourselves the final... How many did we actually get in the end? That's seven. So the recipe was for 30. At various stages, some dropped away due to mistakes. We ended up with seven. That's fine. But I've got Claire with me. I've brought Claire with me. And now I shall reveal the fact that... Claire, the reason why we did all this, the sugar work and the macarons and everything, is because to make up for the fact that I've trashed everything in the kitchen every previous year... One, I haven't trashed anything this year, as far as I'm aware, but we may discover some stuff down the line. As far as I'm aware, I haven't trashed anything. And two... I want to make your favourite dessert, macaron. My, my favourite dessert's lemon tart, John. Are you 100% sure about that? 
quite sure about that. Okay, so I didn't make lemon tart, I made macaron. That's possibly someone else's favourite dessert, I'm not sure. Well, um, okay, well have have a macaron anyway. I'm gonna give you this one, because this, this one actually seems like that's that's vaguely macaron shaped. I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab this one, this one's like reasonable. Right, so we got we got macarons, so we're gonna see how good the macarons are. That's really bitter. It's really chocolatey. Is it? I find it too bitter. I think you like dark chocolate more than me. I do. I think the ganache is the dark the ganache is really dark and bitter, a bit too much for my taste. But I did tailor these for your taste. That's why I went for really dark chocolate because you like really dark chocolate. Mhm. Mm this is actually all right. I mean, hey! Like it doesn't really taste like a macaron, but it does taste good. What? Well, I've not. To be, I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember whether I've even had macarons. I think I have in the past. But I can't remember what they're supposed to taste like. What are they supposed to be like? Next to this. It's supposed to be a lot more like light and airy. This is a bit dense. Well, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not they're not great, are they? They're not a disaster. I think they've worked they turned out better than the tabby cake in the end. Just well, okay. Just Well I'm not not sure about this one. Right, okay. Well, okay, I've got a secondary offer for you. Okay. So Due to the fact that as time went by, we kind of had less and less to actually make due to various mistakes. There is about two thirds of a pan full of ganache left over, if you just like to have that in a spoon instead. Ooh, yes please. Right, okay, good. We've managed to do something good for Claire. Yay! And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, another year, another anniversary special, another utter disaster. Well, maybe not disaster, but I will say this is probably the worst we've ever done in terms of the amount of wasted ingredients, because we did start off with enough to make 30, and now having just done a bit of sampling, yeah, we're down to five. And honestly, that one at the bottom... I feel like that, that just shouldn't, that shouldn't count, to be honest. That one should just be put to one side, and this one's, that one's a mess too. Well, you know, actually, you know what, this one's, this one's not great either. Okay, two. We're down to two. So, in some ways, not a great success, but probably still better than the tabby cake. Maybe not quite as successful as the wedding cake. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a good year for the channel and some good macaron sort of to finish it off with. Thank you all so very, very much for joining me on this wonderful culinary adventure. And thank you also very, very much for just sticking around and subscribing to the channel too. It's been a good year. Here's to many more to come. Hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you're still around to join me for whatever madness I dream up next year. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many A True Nerd. And this has been the Many A True Nerd 6th Anniversary Special. Thank you very much and goodbye. Claire, show off what the buttered packaging does. That's amazing! 25, 50, 100, and then 110 grams. If you need to rounds. the butter, you just fold the packaging onto the butter and it... I, that's amazing! <laughs> that's such a good idea! See, you're How long has butter been doing this? Forever.